Now that we have the user entered city, let's see how we can connect to a web service in order to pull down the current weather. So going back to the dismiss function that's being called on submit or on close of our modal. So if that passes back data, that means it was a form submit. So this is where we want to be able to call our web service and add that weather to our list um, in order to show it back to the user. So let's start by creating a method on our home page controller that is going to call our web service. So it's going to take the city and country and let's just cut that and put that in our function. So in this skip weather, it's going to take a city, which is a string, and a country, which is also a string. And just to kind of stub out what it's going to do, it's going to call the weather API, and then it's going to push that weather data to our list. So for now, we'll just comment this out. So now let's generate the service that's going to give us the weather for a given city. So this creates a weather service on the providers folder. So we'll go into there and just clean up some of this starter code that Ionic 2 provides. So it's already importing our HTTP service that we're gonna to use to call the web service. And you'll also notice that we're importing the injectable component, which we include at the top of the class on any class that we're gonna be importing as a service. So I'm just gonna start stubbing out our method for returning the city weather. And now to see where we actually get the weather from, we're gonna be using this open weather map API. So if we go in the current weather data API doc, you can see the different options that we can pass in in order to get back the current weather. So we can pass in a latitude longitude, which we'll do later when we are using the device's GPS. We could also pass in a city ID if we have that from the weather API already. But to start with, we're going to be using this query parameter that takes a city or a city and country. And you'll also need the app ID in order to make authenticated calls. So now that we have all that information, we can add this to our weather service class. So I'll add the app ID and I'll add the base URL as well because we'll be using that in different functions in this class. And now we have everything we need to write our service function. So uses the base URL slash weather. And it takes an app ID parameter. So we'll just put each of these params on a new line in order to make it easier to read. So it takes the city and then also country and the http.get well, we'll return an observable. And then we'll be able to consume that observable in our page. To use our new injectable service in our home page, we'll have to do three different things. So the first thing is we'll import the service at the top of the page. And since the service is going to return an observable, we'll also import the observable library. The second thing we need to do is add the service as a provider to our page. 
Now we can add the weather service to our constructor. This will automatically call the weather services constructor and take care of any dependencies that it needs and then make this.weather available to our home page. Now we can use the weather service to call the city method, passing in the city and country from our modal. And we'll get a observable back from our weather service. So it's a little bit different than the syntax of a promise. With observables, it's more like a stream. So you're subscribing to the stream of data that's being returned. In this case, it'll just be a single response from the weather API. And it also takes an error argument, similar to a promise. But the final argument is a little bit different. This is called when the stream or the observable has finished. So we'll just console out that. So if you're not already running Ionic Serve, go ahead and start that up. So we should be able to go in and add a new city. Let's try London this time. And what we'll see is the raw response in our weather list array on our homepage. So in order to convert this raw JSON response to a JavaScript object, we're gonna to need to do one of two things. We could use the global json.parse, which will take a JSON string and return a JavaScript object. Or what we're gonna do is use one of the observable functions, which is similar to JavaScript arrays, and it's called map. So we're gonna map the data response to data.json, which will be a nice JavaScript object. Know that any function that you use from observables needs to be imported. Angular 2 doesn't automatically import all of the observable functions in order to reduce file size.